Hello, Sky Taylor, and welcome to tip number six of Tips and Tricks. You know, I'm always thinking outside the box, and as an artist, you oh, you can relate to this. We're creative people. We don't do the norm. We always are looking for avenues and creative venues to 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 do something different. I was thinking about food coloring. That's right, food coloring. Did you ever think of painting with food coloring? Kind of fun and really incredible results because food coloring is ultra, ultra bright. It's a dye. So the colors are ultra bright. Now, I picked up this uh, box of McCormick's. I, I think I paid a couple of bucks if that, but you can buy them at your dollar store also. And uh, you can get a wide variety of colors. Uh, this is just four colors. This is your uh, red, yellow, green, and blue. But what you do is you take your gel medium on a, a blank canvas and you create different patterns with it with a palette knife. You put it on and you create different patterns and you cut into it and make little different avenues. Then you take your bottle of our secret sauce. This is the um, gel medium mixed with water. You take, you probably put maybe a quarter inch, eighth inch, quarter inch. You want to get it milky in water and then fill it up with water and also put iridescence in there. You know, you can add a lot of iridescence to it if you want. You got to watch episode one of The Crazy Painter. And we talk about this. But when you have your gel medium down, you spray it. You just give it a mist. Now what happens with that is that when you use your food coloring and you drop drops on it, it, it channels, it goes through all the channels that you cut and creates neat patterns. Now, of course, you can shift it and move it and everybody's results are going to vary. Sometimes it'll be good, sometimes it won't be good. This is just average, this just came out average. But I will show you a quick demonstration on how to do it, but this came out just average. But what's neat about this is that I can now use my acrylics and paint in and, and finish it. I could call this a background, a general background. And I can use acrylics to finish painting it. But what's neat about this is the back of it. Ah. The back, it all bled through. Now, if this was a finished piece, I would paint this white because I wouldn't want my customer to see this. But on the same respect, you could turn the canvas upside down, spray it, use the food coloring, drop on, let it dry, and this pattern will come out on this side. Now you have a great background to start with, the paint. You let that determine how your abstract is going to go. So, I mean, it's kind of neat. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And I just want to say, a lot of you people might think, well, it's not going to work or be strong. When you're using gel medium, gel medium is incredible. Look at this. Now I have a bucket of gel medium and I accidentally left it open and it dried. This came out of the bucket. This is a heavy, heavy gauge plastic. You remember back in the 60s, your parents would buy furniture, if you're that old, and they would put plastic over it or maybe your grandparents and you'd sit on it and the winter was freezing cold and in the summer it would be hot and you'd stick to it. Same plastic, folks. That's why if you mix house paints with this or gel medium, it's going to last forever. You can't even rip this. This is incredible. This is incredible plastic. And this is something most people won't see. And I didn't know for years until just recently how durable gel medium is. So by using that, you're locking in everything. So come on, peek over my shoulder and let me do a quick demonstration and show you how this is done. Just a quick demo. It's all it is is a demo. It's not going to be a finished piece. Just want to show you the basics. Okay, here we are with a blank canvas just to give you a general idea. Now, I'm not going to complete this. I just want to show you quickly a few techniques. I have my palette knife loaded with my gel medium, and you can make all different types of textures. Just pop it on there. Maybe cut into it. Don't be shy, use a bit 
like I said, I'm not going to finish this. I'm just going to show you some ideas here real quick. See how I'm cutting into it and use your imagination. This is your painting. You do it and you create it the way you want. I'm just showing you the general technique. Okay, we got that down. You spray it with our gel medium water and iridescence. Now you want to always shake it up, shake it up good, then give it a spritz. Just like that. Now here's what happens. I think we're going to start off with the yellow. And the bottles look like this, and you can just drop. See? You're getting splashes of color. Look how vibrant that looks. It's almost like an orange yellow. And you can move it along and create different patterns just by shifting and moving it. Look at that. And by spraying it with our, our bottle of gel medium, you're putting gel medium over the top of this. So it's it's locking into the locking in. And you can create different uh, patterns and by shifting and moving. Maybe we'll add um, maybe, let's say red. Drop a few reds in there. You can always also spray a little bit more on there if you want. See how it's see how it's moving along the areas here, and you're creating different uh, techniques. Okay, let's throw a little bit of green. Isn't that incredible? Incredible, right there. See what's happening. Now, what you could do is you could uh, mix a little bit of white with the gel medium and uh, acrylic white if you wanted to. That would be a good idea too. And you can drop in maybe a little bit of green. Well, so much for a little bit. And you can spray a little bit. There you go. See how that's happening? And look at this. We're creating some really interesting patterns here. Really vibrant greens. And just by shifting it and letting it go And look what we've done just right there. Look at that interesting design, how it all goes together. And just by creating and moving and shifting, uh, you'd be surprised on what you can do. That's just a quick demo. Another thing too is that you can scratch into it with a knife to create different lines going up. You want to add some interest to it. Anything will work. A palette knife. I happen to have this spatula handy. But there you go. See, I've created some interesting effects going up. And you could do that with the green, too. When it's wet. You can create some interesting patterns here. Well, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed that quick little tip. And the best thing to do is experiment. But I want to warn you, you got to wear rubber gloves because what happens is this stuff is very staining. Once it gets on your hands, your hands are going to look like Easter eggs. <laughs> and it's unforgiving. So make sure that you do this in an area and, and cover up really well because a drop of this on material or anything, it's gone. There's no way you're going to get this out. So you know from dying Easter eggs what happens. So pick your area careful in an area and, and uh, make sure you cover up real well and wear those gloves. Well, anyways, until we see you on the ne next tips and tricks, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Uh, Wednesdays and Sundays, tips and tricks. Wednesdays and Sundays, you want to look for them. Talk to you soon. Bye.